Oh boy, it's time for another one of those videos again. This time, I have this HP Pavilion A1206N computer from 2005 that we're going to be doing the system recovery on today. This is a computer I've had for a while now, and yet I've yet to make a video on it solely because I don't generally tend to make videos on stuff that's actually my main device, and that's what this computer was. It used to be my old computer for old games and stuff. But it's no longer that anymore, so I guess now I can make a video on it. Even if it is missing a few parts. We might as well run over the specs before we get started. This computer has an AMD Athlon 64X2 4200 plus CPU, 2 gigabytes of RAM, a 250 gigabyte hard drive, a DVD burner and a CD-ROM drive, along with a floppy drive, an NVIDIA GeForce 8500 GT, a Creative Sound Blaster Autogy SE, and a modem, because why not? Far from the cleanest computer inside, but it's a pretty good PC, hardware-wise, for its era, and that's why I used it for this purpose. Now before we continue, there is one thing I want to address that nobody really cares about, but I'm gonna address it anyway because I'll feel better if I do. And that's that this computer came with Windows XP Home Edition, but we're not going to be installing that. Instead, we're gonna be using media from a computer that came with Windows XP Media Center Edition. I found media for this computer on the Internet Archive, since obviously I didn't get it with this computer, but when I tried it, it just didn't work, like the media was broken. So instead we're going to be using this media, because either way, I have a product key for it so I can activate it, and Windows XP Media Center Edition stuff is just cooler than Home Edition anyway, so like who cares? With that in mind, I've gone ahead and preloaded the software right on the hard drive, so this won't take forever since we're not loading it off of DVDs. With that in mind, HP used a pretty similar program to what Gateway used, so all those Gateway Recovery Media videos used the exact same PC Angel program that HP did. That's pretty neat. You get your average system recovery, which doesn't delete anything, along with the nuclear option, and a Windows System Restore option, because that's always handy. And you can view the about info for some reason. With that, we might as well do the destructive recovery because there's nothing on here anyway, so it really doesn't matter what I select. And uh, there we go. So now we sit back and wait, I guess. I don't know. I don't have anything more entertaining to say. As you can see, the recovery operation successfully completed, and it didn't actually take that long. I was kind of surprised. And a short 
amount of time later, we're ready to check the recovery partition for some reason. I don't know why. Oh well. Okay, a short time thing amount later words. We have more problems. To be fair, I totally expected that this was going to happen. It's because this media isn't for this computer, and it's also because regardless of what media this computer came from, this motherboard is a replacement, so regardless of the media, it's gonna throw this error since the motherboard is not original. There's nothing we can do, it's just gonna sit here and be annoying and get in our way, so there's nothing we can do, I guess this video is over. In actuality, we're gonna use Hiren's boot CD to get around this, it's pretty easy. You just need to boot into an environment to access the hard drive so that you can delete a single folder. You could also just plug your hard drive into a modern computer or something that can access File Explorer, but this is just a lot easier. The config check folder that we're looking for is located within the bin folder, which of itself is included in the HP folder on the root of the drive. That was a mouthful. This folder is pretty much useless towards functionality of the system, and it's literally just a batch file that prevents you from using your system. For some reason, we're checking the recovery partition again after rebooting. And a short little while later again, we're finally getting somewhere, this time asking us to select our country. It's all standard stuff, thanking us for purchasing this computer from Hewlett Packard Company featuring Microsoft Windows XP. In this case, the setup phase is just the usual Windows XP setup asking you the typical questions. And when that's done, we have to sit through another loading screen and it has to reboot again. The actual fun setup happens after it restarts the computer again and you're greeted with the HP Easy Internet signup, which helps you get on the internet with a ton of dial-up services that come pre-installed on the computer. Because reasons. I don't care about any of this, so just go away. <sighs> More setup? Really? This time it's the HP Easy setup, which helps you do things. It's all just standard things telling us how to get help and to update the computer and get warranty and stuff, but the real interesting thing is this selection, which allows you to actually change your default internet browser between Internet Explorer 6 and Netscape 8. This is actually kind of a neat feature. What's not a neat feature is Norton Internet Security being preloaded, but you know who cares. And eventually, after a long time, and after this computer takes forever to start up, we're greeted with our desktop. At some point. Someday. There we are. That's much better. Already, things are already not working, but I'm going to go ahead and install the NVIDIA graphics driver for that NVIDIA card since it came up with the fine new hardware wizard. Oh, never mind. I guess we're just going to go ahead and skip that. So it's time to go through what the system came with. In this case, it comes with HP PhotoSmart Premiere already pinned to our start menu. It looks to be kind of like a Photoshop slash like photo gallery hybrid where it lets you just view your stuff but then it also lets you edit and it also comes with media center which throws a fit because i don't have any graphics drivers installed as we just determined but this is just windows xp media center the interesting thing is that hp actually has media center plugins on here we have hp games which doesn't appear to have anything in it so that's uh really fun. Presumably this is something where you would have bought games online and they would have showed up in here, but in this case this doesn't work anymore, so never mind I guess. I've never heard of disc cover before, but apparently it's a thing I guess. And we also have HP PhotoSmart again, it's presumably got a Media Center plugin, so that's kind of cool I guess. It's just the same thing as the desktop application except you can view things in Media Center. That's kind of cool I guess. And there's also other stuff in here that's not normally part of Windows XP Media Center Edition. Some of the software that comes preloaded on this computer. That's also kind of cool. Otherwise, this is just standard Media Center stuff. Obviously, it doesn't really work anymore because this is 15-year-old software. We also get AOL three months included. Yay! Oh, never mind. As typical with HP stuff, it comes preloaded with a ton of games, like Bejeweled 2, everybody's favorite game, it's actually really good. There's a lot of games on this, holy crap. We also get a ton of HP PhotoSmart and printer thingies, presumably to try and integrate you into that HP ecosystem, as well as Office 2003 and Works 8. Cool. We also have this movie software, presumably maybe this is like PhotoSmart, whatever it's called, where you can do things with video clips. 
I've never used it before, so cool. It comes with, obviously as we determined earlier, it comes with Netscape 8. So that's cool. It's kind of interesting they actually came with other browsers on it. My guess is it probably wanted to sell you the Netscape internet service and that's why this browser is on here. Oh cool, it's Netscape 8.0.4. That's old. Everybody's favorite Norton internet security that I'll probably uninstall as soon as this video is done. Internet services that I presumably can't use. Bunch of HP Pavilion recovery things. Quicken 2006, as well as Real Player, which probably came with America Online, since that's on here. It's version 10 from 2004. That's cool. I have no idea what Snapfish is, but apparently it's for my photos, so that's cool. We also have DVD things, because of course. User's Guides, Windows Digital Media Enhancements. That's right, because this is Media Center Edition. We have even more DVD software. Can't get enough DVDs. I guess one of them's for playing DVDs, and the Sonic software is probably for making DVDs. And with that, that's kind of about it for the software load, really. It's kind of just a bunch of other shortcuts to things. Interestingly, there's not actually that much space being taken up by this install of Windows. With all the stuff on it, I would have figured there would have been more. Otherwise, there's not much else really to this. There's also the HP Help and Support Center, which we can use to learn more about our PC. Oh, well. Never mind. But that's kind of it really for this recovery job, I guess. There is one more thing before I close off this video, and that's that I had to do a bit of registry hacking to this thing before I was actually able to use it. I had to disable an Intel driver that was set to load on startup because it was causing a blue screen every time I wanted to use Service Pack 3 on this computer, which is kind of important if you're going to install updates. This driver specifically was an Intel processor power management driver, which was trying to control an AMD CPU, which in this case is not going to work. If I didn't disable this driver, the computer just wouldn't start up. It was giving me a blue screen, which was completely throwing me off since I had no idea how to fix it. It didn't say that this was the driver that was causing the issue. It was just not working. There was nothing to work off of. As you might be able to tell, the setup in this shot is way different from the setup in the last shot, and that's because I actually filmed most of this video in August, and I'm just now getting around to finishing it, because this issue has seriously taken me so long to figure out. And the bottom line is, I found a TechNet article kind of discussing this issue. I'll link it in the description if you're more curious, but the bottom line is, there's Intel drivers on this that were causing conflicts. As for why Intel drivers were on the system to begin with, it's because HP, of course, uses the same images realistically for both of their Intel and AMD machines, and I guess for some reason some Intel drivers just managed to find their way in. Maybe this is AMD getting the second class treatment, and HP assuming that most of their systems are just Intel systems, so therefore they're just going to preload several Intel drivers into the system, but I don't know. I'll let you be the judge of it. But at least the system boots up now, I can finally close this video, even if there are still more problems. Mm -hmm.